Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn, and today we're talking how to attract and keep an ENTP interested in you. So the advice you can get from this video is if you're interested in an ENTP or you're thinking, okay, this is a type I might want to date or this is a person I might want to note this or talk to or get to know better, these advice will help you on the way. So the first thing is just comes down to be complex, you know, have original ideas, spend time and work on your ideas, work on your thoughts, work on your systems, uh, go deeper and deeper into a project and really explore it from many layers and many levels. Go as deep as possible with an idea because ENTPs, they're interested in ideas that have unlimited potential. If an idea has been explored truly in depth and if you worked really hard to gain an awareness of something and to study and do your research on something, an ENTP is going to be a lot more interested in you and hearing you talk about this subject. They're going to want to know as much as possible. They like figuring out things. And so what you want to do is you want to have crazy goals and ambitions. The crazier your goals and ambitions are and the more far-fetched and long-term they are in their prospects and in their potential, the more interesting to an ENTP. These goals do not have to be perfect. In fact, ENTPs like things that need to be polished. So if you got something that needs to be polished or perfected, if you create a project that looks a bit ugly on the outside and looks a bit like... Uh, it could need some work and ENTP is going to be all over that and they're going to find that more interested than something that appears perfect on the surface because a lot of the time uh, ENTPs they're people that they like to fix things that are broken <laughs> they like to work on things that don't seem to work so it's okay to have uh, plans and goals and to have a lifestyle that is uh, incomplete or that have issues or struggles and problems with what you're doing as long as you know what you're doing ENTPs, they want to talk to people who know what they're doing or seem to know what they're doing. So if you at least seem to have a clue about what you want in life and where you're headed, that's good enough for an ENTP. You don't need to have everything together as long as you've got the main thing that's still important. I think ENTPs, they also dislike or are repelled by people that appear socially perfect. You know, somebody who is liked by everybody, somebody who seems to fit in everywhere. ENTPs, they seem to dislike people that are perfect, socially perfect. So if you're somebody who struggles to fit in, don't worry about that. The ENTPs, they are actually going to be the ones that tend to root for underdogs. So if you seem like an outsider or if you seem like you're a bit outside of the group or the norms, they're going to be more interested in you than if you uh, look perfect, dress perfect and talk and act and appear in a way that everybody likes and appeal is appealed to. In fact, ENTPs tend to find socially perfect people boring. I would also say a good key to identifying and attracting an ENTP is have enemies. Dare to have enemies, dare to have people that are against you and don't worry about competition. If you are a person that people are, have problems with and criticize and question and have issues with, ENTPs are going to find you fascinating, more fascinating than if you're somebody who is everybody's friend. So if you can work on these things, you know, being a person who has uh, worked on and spent time on their own ideas and reflected on their life and their goals and what they want and formed some kind of clear understanding or awareness of where they want to be headed. And if you are prepared to stand up and do these things, no matter what other people think, those are all good steps to getting an ENTP interested in you. Now, when you have an ENTP in your life, what I want to say is I think it's important to be able to identify and speak frankly about problems in the relationship and to make challenges and difficulties crystal clear to the ENTP. Don't beat around the bush. Don't uh, uh, try to always uh, create a harmonious environment. Don't always try to make everything seem nice and uh, fluffy, but instead do let things have an edge and do show problems to an ENTP because ENTPs they are eternal optimists when it comes to projects and ideas they really really believe ideas can work out and they tend to have a blind spot because they tend to assume everything is going to turn out great 
So if you can be the person in an ENTP's life that shows issues and makes issues clear, that's going to be of help to an ENTP and an ENTP is going to fundamentally appreciate that. The person, the one person that warned them and let them have their guard up, the one person that uh, was able to speak frankly about a problem or issue when everybody else was saying, oh, it's going to be fine and no worries and that's all good. If you can be that person for the ENTP, uh, you're already going to be a big help to them. You're going to help them make sure that they stay healthy and happy and that they can uh, manage their optimism and be optimistic, but still be optimistic and at the same time realistic in what they do and in what they're working towards. I would also say, yeah, this goes without saying, but give ENTPs freedom. If ENTPs see you as trying to control them, they are going to want to get away from you and they're going to start running <laughs> and uh, that's just it the more you you might not think you're being controlling you might not realize that you are it but if you are too controlling and if you're too much trying to tie them down they're going to pull back and uh, that's just the push and pull of this relationship if you push they're going to pull away from you and so that's yeah, something to think about think of ways to uh, create mutual boundaries and guidelines and rules but also make sure that you give the ENTP ample room for freedom I would also say don't play a victim around an ENTP don't act like a, a person who always needs help and support don't always play the victim card don't always take oh it's all my uh, everybody's always against me and oh things are never going to work out for me and everybody's always uh, being uh, in my way you don't you know that can work some people are able to manipulate ENTPs like that but long term that's going to be really unhealthy for you and your relationship because yeah ENTPs are going to find that off-putting in the long term so try to be your own confident in yourself and in your beliefs and in your goals and try to avoid victim card because that's probably the biggest no-no with dating an ENTP Okay, that's how to attract an ENTP, and if you have an ENTP in your life, or if you're an ENTP, let me know in the comments down below what you find attractive. Now, thanks again for watching this video, and leave a like and share this video with other people you might think would be interested in this subject, and I hope to see you all in the next video.